Welcome back. In this video, I'll be teaching you the bacterial viral factors that they use to cause symptoms. Often in the exam or cue banks, you will be asked how bacteria can cause symptoms or survive the immune system. So you need to know these factors very well. So let's start. First viral factor is protein A, and it's used by the bacteria Staphylococcus aureus. And its function is that it binds the FC portion of immunoglobin G to prevent phagocytosis. Next we have protein M, and it's used by group A streptococci, and it plays a major role in the molecular mimicry in rheumatic heart disease and rheumatic fever. And also it prevents phagocytosis as well. So just remember that protein M is for mimicry, so mimicry starts with M. Next we have immunoglobin A protease, and this is an enzyme, and it's released by streptococcus pneumonia, haemophilus influenza, and neisseria. To remember these bacteria, just remember the word chin. This will cleave immunoglobin A, which will allow the bacteria to colonize the respiratory and GI mucosa, because the function of this immunoglobin is that it prevents the bacteria from attaching to, to the mucosa of the GI and respiratory tract. Next, we have injectosome, and the bacteria that use injectosomes are Pseudomonas arginosa, E. coli, Salmonella, and Shigella. To remember this bacteria, just remember the word piss. What injectosome is, is that it's a small needle-like shape that the bacteria can use to deliver the toxin into the host cell, and it's used, it's known as the type 3 secretion system. Next we have serpentile cord, and it's used by mycobacterium, and this will activate the macrophages and release tumor necrosis factor alpha, which will form granuloma. So if you're asked what forms granuloma in mycobacterium infection, it's going to be the serpentile cord factor by releasing tumor necrosis factor alpha. Next we have sulfatides, and this is also used by mycobacterium, and it's just basically a surface glycoprotein that will inhibit the phagolysomal infusion. So this will allow the mycobacterium to survive inside the host cell WBC. Next we have K-capsule, and it's used by E. coli, and this is what induces the symptoms of meningitis and pneumonia in this infection. Alright guys, so that's everything I've got today. I've managed to collect all these uh, viral factors and put them in one video because they're scattered all over First Aid and Kaplan books, because there's no specific section for them. And uh, yes, so that's everything I've got today. And also before I go, thank you guys for 150 subscribers. That's real cool. Thank you.